Good morning, good evening. <laughs> Welcome to everybody out there. Um, we're back today with the uh, update on the NAACP. And uh, today as our guest, we have a new officer, committee chairman, Ms. Felicia A. Hill. And she is the uh, chairman of the community, she, actually it's called Community Coordinator Committee. So she's the chairman of that, and she's new to that. So this year we're really going to give her uh, a run for the money. <laughs> Good afternoon, Felicia. Good afternoon, Carolyn. Nice to be here. Well, uh, Felicia, I got one question to ask you. The first question. I got a lot of them to ask. Uh -huh. The first one is, uh, what is your background? What do you bring to the NAACP? Well, work, servants, as okay. a servant. That's one of the first and foremost things. But my background pretty much is in healthcare. I'm a registered nurse by um, profession, uh, community volunteer, mother of two, wife of one. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so pretty much that is, and just being a servant and um, Sunday school teacher. So just believe in the spirit of volunteerism. That's good to hear. A lot of people, a lot of us have kind of forgotten it, and it's always about what's in it for me. Not at all. Um, today, the reason why I know that we stand here and we have the opportunity and we have our first elected African-American president who is uh, serving his second term is because the shoulders that we stand on are great. And the spirit of volunteerism and individuals who made a difference. Um, they weren't, it wasn't a paid position, but they just called in the charge and they pursued it. So that's pretty much the reason why that I know that we have to, it's a must. Okay. Well, what brought you to the Dayton NAACP? Well, um, here of the late, the hostility towards the disenfranchisement of African Americans and people of color and poor people, especially when it comes to the right of to vote. Um, <clears throat> it has been really aggressive and I just saw that I cannot, no, I can no longer just sit on the sidelines, not that I did before, but to really take an active role in an organization that has championed um, individuals' right to vote, um, individuals' right to making sure they're not disenfranchised, um, make sure that they're not oppressed. So I didn't have to reinvent the wheel because it was already created. That's good. Well, for me and I, I'm sure the rest of the executive board, Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you graciously. I look forward to working with the entire board and the community um, and our president, Derek Ford. I do see a lot of positive things that are coming out of the NAACP here in our local branch. So, and I, I would like to be a part of that and to lend services wherever I might be able and available. Okay. Well, now we're going to get down to the tough part. Okay. What is your committee about? Well, the um, Community Coordination Committee, <clears throat> pretty much it encapsulates, it's kind of a broad spectrum. What we do, we enlist other organizations throughout the community that have issues of African Americans and um, other people of color. Um, so we're not an island. Um, making sure that, because there's power in numbers, things that are happening within our community, like for instance, um, not having access to healthy foods, um, communities that do not have grocery stores that you have to go, either they don't have it or they go into these little um, side stores with, it's not, and I'm not criticizing it, but however, the quality is not as great as it could be, and the prices are astronomical, so it's a double whammy. It's almost like a, a double tax, because they have to pay more for it, 
and the quality isn't as great, so it might not last as long. So to enlist maybe other organizations like the city of Dayton, I know, I don't know if it's specifically the city of Dayton, however, I know it's vacant lots where they have turned into gardens, community gardens. Mm -hmm. Wagerson Garden Center does the same to really help with that and to energize that and to get more exposures because some people just don't know. You know, back in the day, we we garden. That's what we did. We didn't always go to the grocery store. We garden, and then we can, and then for the winter time, we had what we needed. So to really emphasize on that. So even though that's a problem, we're not totally codependent on the grocery store. So if they leave, okay, unfortunately, but we need them to a certain point. But at the same time, it's some steps that we can take. That's not. It's really uh, cost effective. You know. A plant, a seed, and getting out there and growing yours, something that you can be proud of, your children can participate in, getting back to some of the roots that we need to get back to. So enlisting some other organizations like that um, to be able to do that. Okay. Well, um, what are your goals uh, besides the gardens? What else do you see your committee being a part of? Um, one of my passions is health care. Mm -hmm. um, love nursing, could do it for free, but I'm not. <laughs> However, I see the impact that the lack of health care has. So the Obamacare, where some people meant it as a snide, I absolutely love that because Obama does care. President Obama does care. He understands because he lived, he walked the walk of his mother suffering cancer, but yet still have to go through the bills and fight the insurance companies just to have health care, which is crazy. So me, being a nurse, having exposure to that. Most of my career I spent in the emergency room, so I would see individuals come in with you know, astronomical blood pressures or things that could have taken care of as preventive medicine or preventive measures or having access to health care, the difference it would have made. Instead of having an astronomical ICU bill, but have a prescription to go and get their blood pressure medications to be able to take that. So working in conjunction with that, because that all ties in together. Um, working with the, the Omni Project. The Omni Project was started by a young man who wanted to expose young people to health care, not just as nursing and doctors, but as radiology and it's a CAT scan and surgical techs and pharmacy, so a broad spoke, uh, uh, spectrum. And um, his main focus really is African American males because we have an epidemic out there of our males not living up to the potential that they can because maybe they have not been encouraged the way that they should have been or have been told something that they're less than and they're not. Um, working with the um, opponent Center with uh, Mrs. Ross, um, Nikki Ross, she's a medical art coordinator and she'll, mm -hmm. they'll be at one of our first meetings. Um, and what she does is the nursing aid component down there. So from the healthcare perspective of having our young people on board within our community of the gardenings um, and dealing with some issues that we face as a whole, not just um, African Americans, but all, you know, Hispanics, Asians, um, the underclass and the oppressed, those poor, impoverished, you know, those who do not have, we are the voice and the champion for them. So that's one of the coordinations, I mean, the positions of the community coordinator. Um, or a chairperson of the community, uh, community coordination that I would do. So it umbrellas a lot, but our two, my main focus now was really concentrating on health care and really exposing African Americans and people of color, you know, um, who aren't traditionally exposed to the health care field and careers to that. Um, the one you mentioned that uh, opponent Center with mm -hmm. Nikki Ross, um, that program there, it's Omni, Program? No, it's two. Hurts. It's two. The, uh, it's Hurt, two. Well, she's the medical arts coordinator for. Medical arts. Um, yeah, she's the medical order, um, medical um, arts coordinator, and she works in conjunctions to other colleges to help to get a pathway um, from Sinclair to Katerine to um, even Wright State to get those mm -hmm. youth hooked up with the mentor that when they're ready for college, they'll have someone to help with that path. Now the Omni Project is, I think it's Eric Carlton, and, and what he does, he has, he's a, um, a radiology tech, if I'm not uh, mistaken, in a CAT scan. He saw that sometimes he's the only one, oftentimes when he go into different facilities or when he sees, it's like, what is a, you know, be shocked to see a, a, a person of color in that type of role. So he saw the need to expose, you know, our youth, especially African-American men or pe young, young boys of color 
because he has walked that walk where he's walking in the room and he's the only one. So it's like he wants more exposure to that. Oftentimes when you hear healthcare or you hear going into that medical field, you're hearing doctors and nurses. You don't even understand that there's other components beyond that. So the first, January the 28th um, at our general meeting, they will be um, participating in there, some of the guest speakers, allowing people to know, because some people just don't know. So just more exposure. Okay. Yeah, I was just I was just trying to correlate from the diff two different programs what the age group that the each was targeting. Um, from the Omni Pro project, uh, the mm -hmm. age group is junior high, starting at the uh, seventh grade all the way up to the twelfth grade, um, <clears throat> and then for the nursing aid program down at Ponitz, I believe it starts the freshman year through um, the senior year. So okay. the age group, I guess it will be maybe about 12 to 18. Um, that's the kind of target range that they're doing. Okay, very good. Um, and I hope you'll take a look out there while you're looking around at different areas and seeing what they have as far as um, that um, 18 to 25 group that might not have gone to college or can't afford to go to college right now but mm -hmm. something or a path that they could go into to find out about these programs and to get involved because you know I work with the youth as far as the youth council okay I'm the advisor down there mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that fall through the crash because maybe they didn't go to the traditional high school finish there maybe had to go get a GAD and have gone to work that's a GAD, a GED. GED. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> and right. so those are, are, are a very important part of our community because just like a lot of times they'll have things that are, are done in the churches, and not everybody goes to a church or has a home church, so they miss out on that information. So we're trying to find all the information we can for our young folks, whether they're in school or out, okay. you know, to try to help out that way. And as you say, exposure is the thing because um, I guess because just like in my family my kids were exposed to different things coming mm -hmm. up and I never paid any attention and my daughter got involved in the medical field mm -hmm. and so uh, she's a surgical technician now so it does follow you have to be exposed to different things in order for for things to happen. It might not happen right at that moment, but down the road it kind of falls into place. Like as a young child, I was exposed to some of the stuff with the aerospace and information like that. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting down the line after a couple of different careers into air traffic control. Oh, so wow. I retired from that. So those are just things, you know, to say that you can come up with something when somebody's a child of four or five that sparks and it stays in their back of the mind and when the opportunity comes up again it's like bingo and then they think like God I always wanted to do this right but because of life and things get in the way um, I know you were talking about different groups and in the community and uh, I would like mm -hmm. to invite the different organizations in the community to, if you don't mind, Not at all. to give you a call or email you uh, and, and try to help form partnerships. And since you're new to the game, other groups will have folks in new positions. And that's one way if you don't have the foundation of what somebody else might have done, mm -hmm. then you can form them that way. So I'll give them the NAACP's phone number, which is 937-222-2172 and they can leave a message for you there and we'll put it in your mailbox. Oh, absolutely. And you'll be able to get it. Absolutely, and, and I really appreciate this, this setting here because this stage, um, it reaches many that we just don't know and you never know, it could be that one or two who really can take it to a whole different level. So I do not want to reinvent the wheel and as I started out, I do not want to be an island. You know, the role of the communication um, community com coordination chair is to do that, to seek other aspects or other organizations within our community who are doing the positive things, who have identified the need. Um, once again, there's power in numbers, so for us to brainstorm and be able to do that, because you know, you, you can't, you don't do it all by yourself. 
We right. didn't get to this position all by ourselves, so to be able to do that, but just this this year, um, really the health care and or just the overall health of our community and really young people. But what you were saying, Carolyn, about the age group that you were 18 to you know 22, 25 of those type of youth, they still need help. Yeah. So closed door, we have not. We have an open door policy. If you have some ideals that you want to share, um, we connect with other individuals, other organizations, you know, who has ideals of what goal that we need to meet. Well, I'm glad to hear that because I'm on that other end. I'm not looking for a career, but I'm looking for that health care for the seniors. <laughs> and that, I'm telling you, I, and the, to see the great thing about like what the, the preventive measures, mm -hmm. um, preventive measures from diet to being able to um, have the gardens within your community, uh, to be able to utilize that. Where you don't have to, with the, President Obama's new policy, preventive care, is that you don't have to pay for that, you know. You don't have to pay a copay. Let me say that you don't have to pay a uh, that component. There can make a world of difference of you saying, you know what? I really don't have the fifty dollars for my office visit, so I'm gonna just hold off, you know, to get this colonoscopy, to get this screening. You know, now it's, it takes that component of it out. You know, it right. takes that hurdle out, and I appreciate that. So, but absolutely, I, I am so looking forward to it. I know it's a lot of work. But at the same time, I'm willing to do that because someone did it for me. Someone did it for you. Someone right. did it the reason why we are able to have this here, you know, to come collectively together. Right. Well, I'm sure you'll have a lot of help. And I'm only going to do a little bit. Okay. <laughs> and, and that's what the little bit, the whole, it takes the, all of us to do whatever part that we can right. play. Right. Um, in your um, community coordination also, um, We've talked about uh, the different groups that you're, you know, talking about targeting and and kind of be doing partnership with. Um, is there any other area? I know, you know, your two mm -hmm. specifics that you're targeting is your goal, but are there any other areas that you're looking for partnership with? Um, right now, I can't say that I'm not, but I'm not closed. You know, because I'm new and I'm a novice at it, um, you, sometimes you just don't know. Mm -hmm. So when the opportunity pre presents, absolutely. But right now I can't say either way, one way or the other, but those are the two because that's such a broad spectrum of health care. Mm -hmm. There's so many aspects within health care, you know, when, they, when you don't have it, when it impedes the um, aspect of even families, when it gets to the point where those breadwinners within the home who have maybe some type of health care issues when they're not able to go out. It, it affects not only the community, but it affects, I mean, not only that family, but the community at large. You know, because here if I'm struggling and then my child might be having some issues or if I'm struggling, I can't help my, my elderly grandparents or my parents, you know, to be able to do this because I'm not taking care of self. So the preventive measures there, of uh, lack of, um, grocery stores within our communities and to have young people to be exposed to something different beyond just doctors and nurses to see that there's other aspects within our community or within the healthcare uh, field that, that they can participate in. But I'm not close to anything. I'm not that very open, very receptive, you know, because sometimes you just don't know. And I right. don't because I'm totally novice at this, you know, and I don't, I, not shutting down any ideals. Mm -hmm. You know, but those are kind of the two focuses that, for now, January, because I had to set some goals. You know, what mm -hmm. are your goals for this year? Didn't want to, and it is a, a broad spectrum, so I want to be effective at the, those type of things, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that. I do, I do. <laughs> so I don't want to, I mean, because it, it, health care is very, very broad, so I mm -hmm. don't want to try to take on too many things. However, I'm not, not at all shutting anything down. Well, um... Since you, you mentioned almost the title, almost took over one of my titles. Oh. I'm going to flip my hat here now. Yes, ma'am. Communications, press, and publicity. Okay. So there's a lot of communication that comes out from different areas to me, and I try to, you know, shoot it out to other folks to handle because some things are not in my lane. i got to stay out of other folks' lane. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so... I've got quite a few that I'm going to shift over to your lane. Okay. And that you can get involved with because 
they try to coordinate um, their um, issues and what they're working on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the same thing we're working on in the NAACP. And I think it would be great to be able to uh, shift those things over to you. Some things are college, colleges uh, out of Rice State, they do some things at mm -hmm. bi bi Bilingual uh, Center and um, things that are coming out of the Asian community. So uh, they can call you now. Okay. <laughs> and We're going to make sure. Felicia A. Hill <laughs> at 937 <laughs> Two 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 one seven two. <laughs> oh, and however I can and meet the need there and, and and commission others to come to be a part of, absolutely will. So I, I'm looking forward to it. I am totally looking forward to it. I know I know the what they say the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. But sometimes yeah. those few get a lot done. You know, and you just to look to see what happens. Well, that's is a lot that goes on. Here within the uh, organization, uh, nationally and locally, mm -hmm. and a lot of times to, we're not necessarily out there shouting about what we do, but we continue to do anyway. Right. And uh, we're glad to have you on board. Well, I'm again. I'm, <laughs> I, I want to say I that am, I am because I've all, I've been a member of, of the NWS. NAACP for a while, but not an active member, mm -hmm. you know, but just like it within your, your church, you have, you, you go to, I don't want to just sit in the pews and not participate and, and be a part of because we do need to champion that. So we also need to, and those members who are members, SETI members, mm -hmm. literally, um, need to also step up to the plate and, and get involved. Any little bit helps. You might think, well, you know, what, what do I have to offer? Time, energy, and effort to go down to the office to participate and say, hey, what can I do to help? What Answering phones or something of that nature. So I just decided to, to take a more active stance, especially after climate there, because if we don't, somebody will. And if we don't lead, somebody uh, will lead us. And where they might lead us, we might not want to go. <laughs> or shouldn't go. You know, or absolutely shouldn't go, because the way that what's happening now, especially with voter registration and, and the, the, you know, the oppression of the voters and the voice, it's scary. It's totally scary. But what's scarier is those people who are apathetic and not doing anything about it right. and singing to the choir. So it, it's time out for that. We can't continue to sing to the choir, but really take an active role. And wherever the need might arise, we need to be there. Okay, well, the, there's a need that's going to arise on, uh, was it the 7th, that we will have the installation of the new officers? Oh, the 10th. The 10th? Mm -hmm. It's the 10th. Okay. Yeah, it's Thursday. After they, I'm losing days. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, on uh, January the 10th at Courthouse Square at 6 p.m., We'll be doing the installation of the new officers for the NAACP uh, for this year. And we welcome you all to come down and uh, meet the new officers and executive committee and um, enjoy and, and uh, salute to the new folks and the awesome. old. <laughs> right. We need our seasoned individuals because without that, we have no history. We need that. Absolutely. Well, I've enjoyed this time here. Mm -hmm. um, looking, looking forward to it. I keep saying that, and I know we have some highs and lows in everything that we do, mm -hmm. but once you're reminded of the sacrifices that individuals made, people of color, Jewish, white, black, hand in hand, who made that we all have a voice and have a right to be here. You have no other choice but to get engaged, you know, once you realize and recognize that and see that. So this is something that uh, I am willing to do, want to do, and uh, God has commissioned, I feel God has commissioned me to do it. So I, I can't just set on, set on my laurels and complain about something if I'm not engaged. Well, I'm going to make that the wrap. Okay. Because that's a perfect way to end in just what you said. Um, we will be back next month. Next month is the uh, anniversary of the NAACP on February the 9th. So we will uh, have some information for you on that and some other good things. So I want to say 
Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Good morning, whatever it is and what time you're seeing us. But uh, this is Carolyn Perkins. I'm signing off again. And you have a great day. Today, more than ever before, women are on the front lines of America's defense. These brave women struggle and sacrifice to help keep our country secure. They deserve to be recognized for their service as guardians of freedom. Please support the American Legion's efforts to serve the growing number of women veterans. Go to legion.org slash honor veterans to find out how you can help. Protect your unborn baby from CMV, a crippling birth defect virus. CMV disables more children each year than Down syndrome or fetal alcohol syndrome. Learn more at cmvfoundation.org. This neighborhood sure has changed a lot over the years. You know there was a time when people like me couldn't live here. I will never forget being told I wasn't welcome in this neighborhood. Well, I own this building now. The Fair Housing Act made a difference for someone like me, so I can choose where I want to live, free from discrimination. Glad you can make it. Make this way. If you don't think that you could be affected by illegal tire dumping, think again. We have nothing to do with it and somebody dumps on your property and, and you get cited for it. According to Ohio law, if someone dumps tires on your property, it becomes your responsibility. That was 150 tires, it was close to $280. The hundreds of thousands of dollars used for the cleanup of illegal tire dumps come from taxpayers. Be sure to report someone hauling more than 10 tires or illegal.